Hello, I'm Tom Miller, a uh, solution specialist with Blue Thread Technologies, and today I want to show a quick example of how our Storage Point product can externalize SharePoint content blobs to a Windows distributed file system share. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, DFS is a technology that's included with Windows Server, and it's been around for some time now. Uh, it's typically used to provide file shares to user community. Uh, these can be like departmental type of shares or uh, personal directories. Uh, these shares uh, are replicated across multiple servers to provide fault tolerance and high availability. And I really think that these qualities make it a good choice for a blob store for storage point. Uh, and to illustrate this, I'm going to be using a, a simple SharePoint environment. Basically, uh, I have a, a web front end server that will be externalizing content to uh, my DFS share and the, that content is going to be replicated to two different file servers. That's going to be uh, Lab02 and Lab03. So the first thing we need to do to get storage points to uh, communicate with DFS is to set up a storage profile. And that can be done through SharePoint Central Admin. Uh, if you scroll down to our storage point section, uh, we can click on storage profiles and go ahead and create a new uh, profile. Uh, this is just going to be scoped to a website. I'm going to change this so that it points to my DFS site only. And we're going to go ahead and externalize this content. And the adapter I'm using is just our standard file system adapter. Uh, nothing special there. Uh, basically, file system will let you see uh, uh, externalized content to a UNC path. And that's what I'm putting in here for the connection string. It's just the, the path to, to the uh, folders. Uh, on my DFS share where I want these contents to go. I'm going to turn off foldering for the, the demonstration here uh, and leave off compression and encryption. Uh, we'll go ahead and test these settings to make sure everything's okay and you can see that the test is indeed successful and we'll save this. And while this is saving I'm going to go ahead and, and minimize this browser window and we'll take a look. Um, right now what I have is, is my uh, three, uh, three Explorer windows open, one that's pointing to Lab03, one that's pointing to Lab02, and the last one is just showing the actual uh, UNC path where we're, uh, that we externalize content to. Um, so as we upload documents, we should be able to go in here and see uh, that, that the, the content gets externalized into those particular uh, machines. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, upload a few documents uh, and we'll watch, watch what happens here. So I just have a, a, a set of sample docs and we'll click OK. And as these get uploaded, these are going to be externalized into the uh, following uh, file shares. And you should be able to see them come through and, and there we are. Uh, it's, they're being written out to uh, the, the particular servers. So what we've really done is we've created a place where the content exists in two different physical locations now but it's really seen as as only one pathway by storage point by SharePoint um, what that does is it gives us a, a level of fault tolerance there so let's go ahead and, and disable one of these servers here um, if I disable we'll, we'll uh, disable my lab 02 box and go ahead and try to open up a document um, we can see that it's probably going to take a little bit of time. Uh, what was going on is the, the front-end web server, the SharePoint server, was attached uh, to Labo2 as, Labo, as, as the, uh, the, the um, DFS host. So behind the scenes, DFS is saying, oh wait, I don't have that server available anymore. Let me look and see what else I got. So it fails over to the Labo3 box, and that's why it took uh, that longer time to open up. But now if I go ahead and click on one of these others, it opens up almost immediately. So you do have that level of fault tolerance that you didn't have before. Uh, there's a number of uses for this. You can actually use this to replicate uh, the, uh, the content off-site and, and maybe forgo some, some uh, uh, backups or at least uh, reduce the, the need for uh, uh, backups at, at certain intervals. Um, you know, Obviously, you're, you're going to have your own specific requirements uh, that, that need to fit into there. But I just wanted to kind of give a quick example of how to use DFS and Storage Point and give you just a little bit more flexibility uh, with your SharePoint system. And I'd like to thank everybody for taking the time to watch. And of course, you can find more information at www.storagepoint.com. Thank you.